again me and old noodle here and this is episode two of the Fred files and this is the real Indiana Jones Percy Fawcett and the lost city of Z okay he's the the real life Indiana Jones okay Hence the hat. Anyways, um, I'm going to start out with, with telling you about his date of birth, date of death, etc. Okay, we're going to go through those those facts and uh, have a couple little notes and things like that. Then we'll get into the story of it, okay? Now, if you've never heard of Percy Fawcett, he was an amazing person. Uh, as far as his feats, the things he's done. Um, anyways... Percy was born August 18th, 1867, okay, in Torquay, Torquay, United Kingdom. The date of death was May 29th, 1925. It's actually unknown because he disappeared. Okay, sorry for the spoiler, but um, war, the, the wars he was in, First World War, okay, Books that he was in, Explore, or the books that he done was Exploration Fawcett, Journey to the Lost City of Z in 1953. He's in there. He's featured in that. Lost Trails, Lost Cities, 1953. These are two books that was written by Percy Fawcett himself. Okay. Now the movie, there was a movie based off of him. A 2016 movie called The Lost City of Z. All right. Was made about him and his adventure. He married, excuse me, he married Nina Ag Agnes Patterson and were married from 1901 to 1925 until his, his disappearance. Okay, she was born in 1871 and died in 1954. Now, um, her father was George Watson Patterson. Uh, I didn't see anything stating her, who her mother was. Um... Okay, they ended up having three children, Jack Fawcett, Brian Fawcett, and Joan Fawcett, all right? <clears throat> now, his name is Percy Harrison Fawcett, who was DSO, or Distinguished Service Order, okay? I'm going to go into the, dis I'm going to go into the description of this now as a short note which is a military decoration of the United Kingdom as well as other parts of the Commonwealth. Awarded for operational gallantry for highly successful command and leadership during active operations, typically in actual combat. He was a British geographer, artillery officer, a cartographer, an archaeologist, and explorer of South America. 
Fawcett disappeared in 1925. Now, this is a little note here. Along with his eldest son, Jack, and one of Jack's friends, Raleigh Rimmel. 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 Uh, during, and, and we'll continue on, during an expedition to find an ancient lost city, which he and others believed ex existed in the Amazon rainforest. He was in service to the British Army from 1886 to 1910. All right. 1914 to 1919, his rank was Lieutenant Colonel. His unit was Royal Artillery in World War I. All right. Now, his early life. We're going to go ahead and touch up on that. All right. Percy Fawcett was... Oh, here we go. We're going to go over his birth again. Percy Fawcett was born on August 18, 1867 in Torquay, Devon, England, to Edward Boyd Fawcett and Myra, Myra Elizabeth Nee McDougall. Fawcett's father had been born in India, and he was a fellow of the Royal Geographical Society, or the RGS, while his elder brother, Edward Douglas Fawcett, 1866-1960, was a mountain climber, an Eastern occultist, and the author of philosophical books and popular adventure novels. During the 1880s, Fawcett was schooled at Newton Abbott Proprietary College alongside Bertram Fletcher Robinson, the future sportsman, journalist, writer, and mutual friend of Sir Arthur, Arthur Conan Doyle. Okay. Thereafter, he attended the Royal Military Academy, Woolwich as a cadet and was commissioned as a lieutenant of the Royal Artillery on July 24, 1886. That same year, Fawcett met his future wife, Nina Agnes Patterson, whom he married in 1901 and had two sons, Jack, 1903 to 1925, uh, and Brian, 1906 to 1984, and one daughter, Joan, 1910 to 2005. On January 13th, 1896, Fawcett was appointed adjutant of the 1st Cornwall, Duke of Cornwall's Artillery Volunteers, and was promoted to captain on June 15th, 1897. He later served in Hong Kong, Malta, and Trincomalee, Ceylon, uh, and Ceylon. Fawcett joined the RGS in 1901 with the aim of studying surveying and map making. Later, he worked for the British Secret Service in North Africa while pursuing the surveyor's craft. He served for the war office on Spike Island in County Cork from 1903 to 1906, where he was promoted to major on January 11, 1905. He became friends with authors Sir Henry Ryder Haggard and Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. The latter used Fawcett's Amazonian field reports as inspiration for his novel, The Lost World. Now, his early expeditions. Fawcett's first expedition to South America was in 1906. He was seconded for service there on May 2nd. Now, that was just a note. The RGS sent him to Brazil to map a jungle area at the border with Bolivia, Bolivia, excuse me. The RGS had been commissioned to map the area as a third party unbiased by local national interests. Fawcett arrived in La Paz in June. While on the expedition in 1907, he claimed to have seen and shot a 62 foot or 19 meter long giant anaconda. That'd be one heck of a feat, wouldn't it? A claim for which he was ridiculed by scientists. Uh, I guess rightly so, if there's no proof or whatever. But He reported other mysterious animals unknown to zoology, such as a small cat-like dog about the size of a foxhound, which he claimed to have seen twice, and the giant Ap Apazuka spider, which was said to have poisoned a number of locals. 
Fawcett made seven expeditions between 1906 to 1924. He was mostly amicable with the locals through, through gifts, patience, and courteous behavior. In 1908, he traced the source of the Rio Verde uh, in Brazil, and in 1910, made a journey to the Heath River on the border between Bolivia and Peru to find its source. Having retired from the British Army in, on January 19th, in 1911, Fawcett once again left his home and family to return to the Amazon and chart hundreds of miles of unexplored jungle. Accompanied by his trusted longtime exploring companion, Henry Causton, and biologist and biologist and polar explorer James Murray. After a 1913 expedition, Fawcett supposedly claimed to have seen dogs with double noses. Well, that'd be weird. These may have been double-nosed Andean tiger hounds. Didn't even know there was such a thing. Uh, anyhow, based on documentary, documentary research, Fawcett had, had by 1914 formulated ideas about a lost city he named Z or Z, somewhere in the Mato Grosso region of Brazil. He theorized that a complex civilization once existed in the Amazon region and that isolated ruins might have survived. Fawcett also found a document known as Manuscript 512, written after explorations made. Hold on a second, I'm sorry. Technical difficulties. After explorations made in the Certeo of the state of Bahia and housed at the National Library of Rio de Janeiro, it is believed to be by Portuguese. Bander, Banderante Joel da Silva Guimarães, who wrote that in nineteen or er, in seventeen fifty three, he had discovered the ruins of an ancient city that contained arches, a statue, and a temple with hieroglyphics. The city is described in great detail without providing a specific location. This city became a secondary destination for Fawcett after Z. At the beginning of the First World War, Fawcett returned to Britain to serve with the British Army as a reserve officer in the Royal Artillery. Volunteering for duty in Flanders and commanding an artillery brigade despite being nearly 50 years old, he was promoted from major to lieutenant colonel on March 1st 1918, and received three mentions in dis dispatches from Field Marshal Sir Douglas Haig in November 1916, November 1917, and November 1918. He was also awarded the Distinguished Service Order in June 1917. After the war, Fawcett returned to Brazil to study local wildlife and archaeology. In 1920, he made a solo attempt to search for Z, but ended, but ended it after suffering from a fever and shooting his pack animal. That's a bad, horrible ending for that trip. That would really be, that would suck. Anyways, um, the final expedition. Okay, we're going to get into the final expedition, and this is a story of Percy Fawcett that so many people have heard or, or known. Maybe you don't know. Hopefully you don't. And, and maybe you'll find out some new stuff on here. Okay. Um, so his final expedition was in 1924 with funding from a London-based group of financiers known as the Glove. That sounds a little weird, doesn't it? Fawcett returned to Brazil with his eldest son, Jack, and Jack's best and longtime friend Raleigh Rimmel for an exploratory expedition to find Z. Fawcett left instructions stating that if the expedition did not return, no rescue expedition should be sent lest the rescuers suffer his fate. 
That's honorable. He doesn't want people to suffer if if he's succumbed to something. That's pretty honorable. Uh, that's, that's a tough decision, a tough call to make, really. Don't send anybody in to help me. Um, so Fawcett was a man with many years of experience traveling and had taken equipment such as canned goods, powdered milk, guns, flares, a sextant, and a chronometer. His travel com companions were both chosen for their health, ability, and loyalty to each other. Fawcett chose only two companions in order to travel lighter and with less notice to native tribes, as some were hostile towards outsiders. Okay, now, on April 20th, 1925, Fawcett's final expedition departed from Cuiaba. In addition to his two companions, he was accompanied by two Brazilian laborers, two horses, eight mules, and a pair of dogs. The last communication from the expedition was on May 29th when Fawcett wrote in a letter to his wife delivered by, by a native runner that he was ready to go into unexplored territory with only Jack and Raleigh. They were reported to be crossing the upper Zingu, a southeastern tributary river of the Amazon River. The final letter written from Dead Horse Camp gave their location and, and was generally optimistic. In January 1927, we're going to jump down to this. In January 1927, the RGS declared and accepted the men as lost. Close to two years after the party's last message, soon after the Society's declaration, there was an outpouring of volunteers to attempt to locate the lost explorers. Many expeditions attempting to find Fawcett failed. At least one searcher died in the attempt. Many people assumed that local Indians killed Fawcett's party, as several tribes were nearby at the time. The Kalapalos, the last tribe to have seen them, the Arumas, the Suyas, and the Zavantes, whose territory they were entering. According to explorer John Hemming, Fawcett's party of, of three was too few to survive in, in the jungle, and his expectation that his Indian that his Indian hosts would look after them was likely to have antagonized them by failing to bring any gifts to repay their generosity. Twenty years later, a Kalapalo, Kalapalo chief called Komatsi told his people how the unwelcome strangers were killed, but others have thought they became lost and died of starvation, and the bones provided by Komatsi turned out not to be those of Fawcett. Edmar Morel and Nilo Veloso reported that Komatsi's predecessor, Isarari, had told them he had killed Fawcett and his son Jack seemingly by shooting them with arrows after Fawcett allegedly attacked him and other Indians when they refused to give him guides and porters to take him to their Chavante enemies. Rolf Blom Blomberg reported that Iz Izarari had told him that Rim Rimmel had already died of fever in a Curicuro camp a somewhat different version came from Orlando Villas Boas, who reported that Izarari had told him that he had killed all three men with his club the morning Jack had allegedly consorted with one of his wives, when he claimed that Fawcett had slapped him in the face after the chief refused his demand for canoes and porters to continue his journey. The Kalapalu have an oral story of the arrival of three explorers which states that the three went east and after five days the Kalapalu noticed that the group no longer made campfires. The Kalapalu say that a very violent tribe most likely killed them. However, both of the younger men were lame and ill when last seen and there is no proof that they were murdered. It is plausible 
that they died of natural causes in the Brazilian jungle. Okay. Let's see here. What do we got left here? All right. All right, y'all. This is one heck of a, uh, of a thing, man. Uh, but let's go through this, and then we'll contemplate, we'll talk, we'll reflect on, on, on this stuff at the end, okay? Now, in 1927, a nameplate of faucets was found with an Indian tribe. In 1933, a theodolite compass belonging to Fawcett was found near the, the Basieri Indians of Mato Grosso by Colonel Anacito Bothello. However, the nameplate from, was from Fawcett's expedition five years earlier and had most likely been given as a gift to the chief of that tribe. The compass was proven to have been left behind before he entered the jungle on his final journey. Wow, you guys. A lot going on with this one. Um, okay, now we're going to talk about Dead Horse Camp. Okay, we're going to explain why it's called Dead Horse Camp as well. Dead Horse Camp, or Fawcett's Camp, was his last known location. From Dead Horse Camp, he wrote to his wife, about the hardships that he and his companions had faced, his coordinates, his doubts in Rimmel, and Fawcett's plans for the near future. He concludes his message with, you need, you need have no fear of any failure. One question remaining about Dead Horse Camp concerns a discrepancy in the coordinates Fawcett gave for, his lo for its location. In the letter to his wife, he wrote, here we are at Dead Horse Camp, latitude 11 degrees 43 south and longitude 54 degrees 35 west, the spot where my horse died in 1920. Okay, now however, in a report to the North American Newspaper Alliance, he gave the coordinates 13 degrees 43 south, 54 degrees 35 west. The discrepancy may have been a typographical error. However, he may have intentionally concealed the location to prevent others from using his notes to find Z. It may also have been an attempt to dis dissuade any rescue attempts. Fawcett had stated that if he disappeared, no rescue party should be sent because the danger was too great. Okay. Now... The controversy and speculations. Now we're going to jump into that. Okay? Now Henry Coston's opinion. We're going to talk about that. Explorer Henry Coston, who accompanied Fawcett on five of his previous expeditions, expressed doubt that Fawcett would have perished at the hands of native Indians, as he typically enjoyed good relations with them. He believed that Fawcett had succumbed to either a lack of food or exhaustion. Now, rumors and unverified reports. Okay? During the ensuing decades, various groups mounted several rescue expeditions without success. They heard only various rumors that could not be verified. While a fictitious tale estimated that 100 would be would be rescuers died on several expeditions attempting to discover Fawcett's fate, the actual toll was only one, a sole man who ventured after him alone. One of the earliest expeditions was commanded by American explorer George Miller Diod. Now, in 1927, he claimed to have found evidence of Fawcett's death at the hands of the Aloiqui, but his story was unconvincing. From 1930 to 1931, Aloha Wonderwell used her seaplane to try to land on the Paraguay River to find him. After an emergency landing and living with the Bororo tribe for six weeks, Aloha and her husband, Walter, flew back to Brazil with no luck. A 1951 expedition unearthed human bones 
that were found later to be unrelated to Fawcett or his companions. All right. Sorry, I got to scratch my nose there for a second. Now, Fawcett's alleged bones. In 1951, Orlando Vias Boas, activist for indigenous peoples, supposedly received the actual remaining skeletal bones of Fawcett and had them analyzed scientifically. The analysis allegedly confirmed the bones were Fawcett's, but his son Brian refused to accept this. Villa Boas claimed that Brian was too interested in making money from books about his father's disappearance. Later, scientific analysis confirmed that the bones were not Fawcett's. As of 1965, the bones reported rested in a box in the flat of one of the Villa Boas brothers in Sao Paulo. Now, in 1998, Sorry, my nose is itching. In 1998, English explorer Benedict Allen went to talk to the Kalapalo Indians, said by Villa Boas to have confessed to have, having killed Fawcett and his party. An elder of the Kalapalo Vajuvi claimed during a filmed BBC interview with Allen that the bones found by Villa Boas were not really Fawcett's. Vajuvi, Vajuvi also denied that his tribe had any part in the disappearance of the expedition. No conclusive evidence supports the latter statement. Now, Vila Boas' story, okay? Now, Danish explorer Arne Falk Rohn journeyed to Mato Grosso during the 60s. In a 1991 book, he wrote that he learned of Fawcett's fate from Vila Boa. Boas, who had heard it from one of Fawcett's murderers. Allegedly, Fawcett and his companions had a mishap on the river and lost most of the gifts they had brought along for the Indian tribes. Continuing without gifts was a serious breach of protocol, since the expedition members were all, were all more or less seriously ill at the time. The Kalapalo they encountered decided to kill them. The bodies of Jack and Rimmel, Rimmel were thrown into the river, and Fawcett, considered an old man and therefore distinguished, received a proper burial. Falk Roan visited the Kalapalo and reported that one of the tribesmen confirmed Via Boa's story about how and why Fawcett had been killed. Okay, so he had one confirmation from a tribesman. Okay, now... We're going to get into this here. Now, Fawcett's signet ring. We're going to talk about this. In 1979, Fawcett's signet ring was found in a pawn shop. Therefore, a new theory is that Fawcett and his companions were killed by bandits and the bodies were disposed, was disposed of in a river while their belongings were spoiled. Now, there's also another one we're going to talk about, a Russian documentary. In 2003, a Russian documentary film, The Curse of the Inca's Gold, Expedition of Percy Fawcett to the Amazon, was released as, as a part of the television series Mysteries of the Century. Among other things, the film emphasizes the recent expedition of Oleg Aliyev to the presumed approximate place of Fawcett's last whereabouts and Aliyev's findings, impressions, and presumptions about Fawcett's fate. The film concludes that Fawcett may have been looking for the ruins of El Dorado, a city built by more advanced people from the other side of the Andes, and that the expedition members were killed by an unknown primitive tribe that had no contact with modern civilization. Okay. Now, we're going to talk about commune in the jungle. Now, this is the last one we got here as far as those go, um, and that's, this will be the end of it. Um, on March 21st, 2004, The Observer reported that TV director Misha Williams, <clears throat> who had studied Fawcett's private papers, believed that he had not intended to return to Britain, but rather meant to found a commune in the jungle, based on theoso theosophical principles and the worship of his son Jack. Williams explained 
his research in some detail in the pref preface preface to his play Amazonia, first performed in April 2004. Oh, God. Wow, you guys. What in the hell is going on here? What are we dealing with here? All right, let's, let's backtrack here. Let's try to go through some of this. Okay, controversy and speculative. Okay, we got Henry Costin saying, you know, that more than, and this is a guy that was on five different expeditions with Percy Fawcett. So he knows Percy Fawcett's skills, skill sets, abilities, and whether he's going to push himself to a certain limit or not. This guy knows him pretty intimately as far as that goes. And he's saying that he always had good relations with, with the Indian tribes, the native Indians. Okay? And he's saying that he probably more than likely succumbed to a lack of food or exhaustion, which is a very possible thing, excuse me, in a jungle, a jungle setting. Uh, it's, it's a tough, a tough uh, environment to survive, especially with all the venomous animals and snakes, spiders, whatever else that's out there. Not to mention wild tribesmen, you know, that may, may kill you shoot you with an arrow or whatnot. Um, then you got the rumors and unverified reports, you know. I mean, um, what in the heck are we talking about here? Is uh, they heard about rumors and unverified. You know, and they're saying that they're, you know, some, they're, they're saying there's rumors about 100, 100 would-be rescuers died on several expeditions attempting to discover his fate. But there was only really one, a soul man who ventured off. Now, I don't know. I don't know if I believe that 100% because there's probably more that did die. That, there's probably people that went out there searching for him that never said anything to anybody. They wasn't publicizing it, you know? So I would say that that one soul man, that's probably the only one they recorded. But that doesn't mean that there probably wasn't more people that did. You know, I mean, I'm sure because it was this was mainstream media for this has been a mystery for a long time. So, you know, throughout the decades, the generations and stuff, there's been probably a lot of people that went there. Who knows how many people may or may not have fallen ill to, you know, exhaustion and whatever. You know, we don't know that. Um, but. Uh, Let's see here. In, 20, in 1927, he claimed to have found evidence of Fawcett's death at the hands of the Aloqui, but his story was unconvincing. Now, I, I, don't, I don't understand. Like they're saying it's unconvincing, but then you had Aloha Wanderwell and used their seaplane to go to the Paraguay River to find him, and then they had to emergency land. You know, you got to understand. Like this, this is rough, rugged ground. I mean, you're out in the middle of freaking nowhere. You know, you're getting into where you, you meet some friendly tribes, and then as you go further on, you're going to find out tribes that's never seen outside civilization. Who in the hell knows how they're going to react to you? They'll probably just stick you with an arrow and, and call it a day. But anyhow, you know, you got then you got the whole story of Fawcett's alleged bones. Um, you know, and then they're saying that, you know, he said that it was scientifically analyzed and it was said that it was his. And then they turn around and they, later on, they said they analyzed it again and it wasn't. So who in the hell's telling the truth here? You know, we, we got a bunch of, we got somebody's bullshitting us. I don't think we're going to be bullshitted. We're going to decipher this nonsense, won't we? Um, you know, then... Uh, you know, 98, you had Benedict Allen went to talk to the Calop Calapalo Indians and said by Via Boas to have confessed to the killing of Fawcett and his party. You know, the elder, uh, he talked to an elder of the Calapalo, Vajuvi, and he claimed during a film BC BBC interview with Allen that the bones found by Via Boas were not really Fawcett's. So he claimed that they weren't Fawcett's. He knew they weren't. Now, Vuvi also denied that his tribe had any part in the disappearance of the expedition. Okay? 
but there's no conclusive evidence supports, that supports the latter statement. So, you know, when you don't have the evidence with it, whatever, you know, you're going to have that iffiness about everything. Um, then you got the whole Villa Bo Boa story, you know, where he's talking about the, uh, the Danish explorer Arn Falkron journeyed to Mato Grosso during the 60s, blah, blah, blah. In his 91 book, he wrote that he learned of Fawcett's fate from Villa Boas, <clears throat> who had heard it from one of Fawcett's murders. Allegedly, allegedly Fawcett and his companions had a mishap in the on the river and lost most of the gifts they were they had brought along for the Indian tribes. Now, continuing without gifts was a serious breach of protocol, uh, and and you would think so because you, you you know if you're that far out, you know, and that's really your only like peacekeeping type means. You would think. So if you lost all your gifts that you you know you're wanting to give these people like to show them the appreciation to try to get past and move on about your business it's going to mess you up. But uh you know and it says you know uh, ex uh, since the expedition members were all more or seriously ill at the time he's claiming that the Kalapalu they encountered, decided to kill them. You know, the bodies of Jack and Remo were thrown into the river and Fawcett considered an old man and therefore distinguished received a proper burial. Now, you know, who knows? I mean, we don't know who's telling the truth. Now, and, and honestly, these Indians that they're, he, this guy talked to, supposedly, now, if he did talk to them and they did say this stuff, they might not have actually, they may have killed three people, but it may not have been Fawcett. It may not have been him and his expedition. It could have been somebody totally different, just somebody, just some other expedition wanting to go out. Because at that time, you got to understand, Percy Fawcett's expeditions and stuff were probably well known. They were probably publicized in the newspapers, I'm sure. Um, they were probably widely known. So I'm sure there's others that was trying to, probably do the same thing and try to go along that line. So how do we know maybe they didn't kill some three other people that who we nobody knew about? Uh, you know, just because we haven't tracked any of the, anything down. We haven't you know. So I don't I don't know. I mean I mean what do you think? What do you guys think? Then you, you were talking about, you know, Fawcett's signet ring. It was found in a pawn shop, right? Now, there's many different circumstances and ways that that could have worked its way to a pawn shop. You know, it could have, could have been some tribesman found it laying around, and he's like, oh, this is shiny and pretty or whatever. We're gonna take, I'm going to take it back to the tribe. Takes it back to the tribe, and then maybe somebody that's a, another tribesman from a different tribe or something that's a little more civilized or whatever. I don't, I don't know how to explain that, but used to civilize civilized you know peoples in their way of doing things they probably saw that ring and they're like oh well that that looks like that would be worth some money I'll trade him for this take the ring then goes down and pawns it you know or could it have been bandits like they're saying which is <laughs> that's a damn good possibility I would say I mean I don't know how many bandits go gallivanting off in the middle of the damn jungle out in the middle of nowhere, but I'm sure there's I'm sure there are some. And they probably have their own little communities out there. Um you know, but then you got uh then you got the Russian documentary. You know, they're they're claiming he's his his theory on this is, you know, that you know, Fawcett was uh, looking for El Dorado, a city built by more advanced people from the other side of the Andes. That the expedition members were killed by an unknown primitive tribe that had no contact with modern civilization. Is that a possibility? Absolutely. Absolutely. Because you don't know how those people are going to react. You have no idea how they're going to react. Um, you know, and then this last theory with this uh, Misha Williams, you know, I mean, she studied Fawcett's private papers. 
according to what I've pulled up here. Now, how true that is, I don't know. I don't know. But she believed that he had not intended to return to Britain, but rather meant to found a commune in the jungle based on the theosophical principles and the worship of his son, Jack. Now, that, that to me seems like a little stretch. The worship of his son, Jack. I don't get why, why would that even be a theory? Like, I don't understand where she's coming at with that, but I don't know. Maybe she's just reading too much into some of his wording and some of his stuff. And uh, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I mean, what do you guys think? Y'all tell me down in the comments below, what do you think happened to Percy Fawcett? Now this man was a he was a soldier, he was a seasoned veteran, a seasoned explorer, a seasoned cartographer, map maker, archaeologist. You know, this man he did it all. Like come on now. Come on now. I don't see this man easily falling. I, I don't see him easily falling to uh exhaustion and, and, and lack of food. I mean, they brought provisions. Now, if something happened at some point and they lost provisions, that's a different story. But this man is a survivor, and I, I can almost guarantee you he's going to do everything in his power, especially with his son in his party and his son's best friend. He's going to do everything in his power. To, at the very least, get them out. And I don't, I don't think, no, I don't, I, I personally, I, my opinion, I don't think he, he was trying to build a commune in the middle of the damn jungle, okay? That's like some damn, uh, what's his name, that Jones guy, crazy, what's his nuts, I can't remember his name, Jones. But, um, I don't see that being part of it. I mean, the guy seems like he's pretty solid and firm as far as sanity goes from what, what, you, what you read about him, but that doesn't mean that that's the case, does it? Um, but anyways, listen, you guys, this is a very intriguing thing. And like I said, there's, there's different books and stuff like that you can check out. I'm going to try and put the, uh, put some photos of that on there so you can get an idea of it and you can see the names of them because I, I kind of went through this fast so I don't know if you have to pause this you know and then replay it back to catch the titles because I did tell you tell you the titles in here um, then do so but there is that like I said that 2016 movie The Lost City of Z okay there were some big names that was in there okay there were some big name actors that was in there. The, the dude that played in uh, the Twilight Saga, he was the vampire guy. I can't remember. Pat Pattinson. Uh, and then you had uh, the, the the dude that plays Spider Man now. Um, uh, dang it, I'm trying to think of his name. What the hell is his name? I can't think of it. Anyways, the one that played the Spider Man through the uh, Infinity War Saga. If you ever seen it, if you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm. If you know, you know. But anyways, y'all, okay, this is The Fred Files, Episode 2, The Real Life Indiana Jones, Percy Fawcett, and The Lost City of Z. Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed this, I hope you found it informative, and I hope you learned a little bit of something on this one. If not, we'll try to teach you something on the next one. This is The Trading Post, until the next time. You guys hang in there. Bye.